If you're considering a career in medicine, this show is for you. I'm going to be talking to a variety of healthcare professionals who are going to share the reality of what it takes to have a successful career in medicine. The good, the bad, the inspiring, the funny. My name is Michelle Nesky. I'm a physician assistant and your host about to bring you Beyond the Scope. If you've done research into applying to physician assistant school, you know how crazy it is with all the different requirements, programs out there, and how do you choose which one is best for you? Well, luckily, two of my friends and PAs created an amazing platform that you can do this all in one place called My PA Box. Research schools by state, track your hours, look up all the requirements literally in one spot at mypabox.com. You can also use their PA school match to enter in all your demographic information, your GPA, whether or not you took the GRE or PA CAT, and filter for schools that would be the best fit for you. You guys, this has been game changing for pre-PAs and I use it all the time with my clients. You can go ahead and get a one-year subscription. And because you're listening to this podcast, if you use Posh PA 15, you can get 15% off your one-year subscription. You will not regret this. If you are a pre-PA, it will sort things out so much for you and just make it easier to do the research on the programs that are the best fit for you. So check them out, mypabox.com. Okay. Awesome. Well, you guys, today I'm here with Liz Rohr, otherwise known as the Real World MP, right? Oh, yeah. um, yes. And uh, Liz is a nurse practitioner. She's going to um, tell us a little bit about how she decided to become an NP, what that process looked like, and also how, her, how she practices now. And then also why she started Real World NP to kind of give back and help new nurse practitioners or or any really advanced practitioner um, as they transition from school to clinical practice, because that's a big change. So, so welcome. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank you so much for having me. I love this. So tell us a little about you and how you decided to uh, become an NP. So I think of myself as uh, not having a big choice in the matter because I feel like I was born a nurse. My mom's a nurse. And nice. Um, I was kind of like the kid in the playground who was like helping people with like their boo-boos and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> I so, that. and like, I'd like memorize the bones and the body. Like I was such a nerd. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so it just, it was not a, it was not an option. Uh, it was so chosen I, for you. Yes. Yes. Divinely chosen. Um, so I became a nurse. Um, and as soon as I got to nursing school, I kind of, I loved like the diagnostic process and the puzzle solving and all that stuff. And I loved my undergrad experience, um, yeah. but I kind of, when I got into being a nurse, I kind of realized that it wasn't as much about the puzzles and the problem solving. I mean, it's definitely problem solving, but it's not as kind of in depth as I yeah. was hoping. And then I kind of like, was sort of like led to believe in some way, like not purposefully, but anyway, I, I kind of realized that nurse practitioner was a little bit more my skill set and my yeah. interest and desire. Um, and so, but I didn't really have the confidence to do it. I felt like it was a lot of responsibility and it was yeah. really heavy. And I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out for that. So I was a nurse. Um, I worked for f- about five years um, okay. and I kind of, I started doing med surge telemetry and then uh, I was long distance from my now husband. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so I went to, I moved back to Boston and I worked at this uh, Mass General. It's a great yeah. hospital. Um, and then I was kind of like, oh, you know what, maybe it's just this job and it's like not quite it. And right. so I moved again out to California because wow. I to do travel nursing. So, um, so I got to do that. And then as soon as I got there and I started my third job, actually in oncology, um, I was like, oh, it's nursing. It's not yeah. a job. <laughs> it's like, I want to be an practitioner. And it was, it was good because I worked on the very, very hard, I worked on like a surgical oncology step down. So it was like yeah. a cancer center and That's it was, tough. Um, yeah, it was like people doing like peritoneal uh, chemotherapy for like appendiceal cancer. It was like very hyper niche and like yeah. marrow transplants that were going sour, like um, graft versus host disease, all this stuff. So it was a really hard, emotionally yeah. hard place. And so I was like, okay, the decision's been made. And so yeah. I went back to school and it was the best thing ever because I just, I just love being a nurse practitioner. Good. <laughs> and in some ways I like beat myself up because I waited so long, but in yeah. respect, having five years of nursing experience was- yeah 
so helpful. Um, oh God. Yeah. So you got your BSN basically, yes. and then worked as a nurse. It's nice to have that, not only that, those clinical skills, but all those different areas that yes. you worked in. Totally. Probably. And I did a, I actually, the, the unit I used to work on at Mass General is now the special pathogens unit for coronavirus. Right oh now, my God. The respiratory acute care. So it's like yeah. uh, step down with respiratory with ventilators and all that kind of stuff. Which oh is my wild. gosh. Um, that is yeah. wild. Um, that is wild. So what, tell us what it, when you decided to go back to school, so you're five years out, yeah. do you have to, what's the application process like? I'm not, I'm just not as familiar with it yeah, as I am absolutely. with some of the others. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for, it depends on the program that you're applying to. Um, typically it involves like, you may or may not have to take the GREs. Um, I took them just to have them. Um, right. And there's like an essay that you have to write typically application process. Um, I believe it was letters of recommendation because I've been an NP now for almost five years. So yeah. 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 But it was not, it was not too bad. It was kind of mm. like, you've been a nurse, here's your experiences, kind of like, hopefully it works out kind of thing. Um, yeah. It's actually funny because when I applied, I um, I worked at a UC, or University of California hospital system. And so I play, applied to University of California um, okay. schools because I wanted the tuition discount and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I was trying to, yeah. Um, but work also the great, system. Great schools. Yes. <laughs> um, and I applied to a whole bunch, but um, I got my letter in the mail and it was a little, remember, I don't know, at least yeah. when I was going to undergrad, I got this big letter, yes. envelope, right? And like full of stuff. And I got this little tiny envelope and my <laughs> husband was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I opened it up and I got it. And actually it was like the main, but UCLA is the one I wanted to go to. That's awesome. Really well, so. That's so funny. Yes. So I mean, when, back in the day, like if you got the big envelope, you were like, yes. yes. <laughs> and then like, I, and I, I think I told the story with someone else, like even when Dave got into medical school, it was so cute. Cause his roommate would like go through the mail and be like, okay, here, you know, like here, <laughs> here it is. And then he was like, this is a thick one. And yeah. like, handed him, so kind of similar, but that's so funny. So even though it's a thin envelope, don't be uh, alarmed. Yes, don't throw it away. <laughs> Please open it. <laughs> That's but yeah, so it was, it was not too bad. It was like stressful. I think like the essay was the hardest part. It was yeah. like a personal statement about like sure. why you want to do this and yeah. why you should work in this program and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. And, um, you're, you have an MSN or a DNP? Uh, MSN. Okay. Yeah. So the schools I looked at, there was one and it was online, uh, that had okay. the DNP and everything else in person at MSN. And I really wanted to do an in-person program. Right. Um, but yeah, and I, I, I think about that and I definitely think about going back to school. And I think the main thing for me is that in terms of how I understand a DNP versus PhD is like the main reason for me to get it is if I want to teach in the school setting, the university yes. setting. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I don't know if I understand the full merits of the DNP without teaching yet. But yeah. I also don't really understand it that well at this point. Yeah. I mean, same for, same for me. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of talk about uh, doctor of clinical practice, basically. So, yeah. um, kind of a DCP, I guess, and yeah. it's a doctor of clinical practice, or you can get a PhD or, you know, so, but for me, what I understand is that if I'm going to be faculty somewhere, yeah. you know, that's how that would benefit me. Or if I was going to be administrative, you know, yeah. like if you are wanting to do something in management or in teaching, you know, more formally, I think it definitely helps you. But in clinical yeah. practice, it is about the same. I, that's what I understand so far. But yeah, it's so, kind of so I'm not as familiar with the with the PA program. So uh, is that the kind of the same path that they're kind of moving? Is that they are? So that's very new. Or, okay. They're not requiring it. You know, most schools are mass. All schools are masters, yeah. um, with the exception of some that are. Well, I guess they're all masters because there's some entry level ones that you can go in, get a BS, you know, and then write into the master's program. Mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of like entry level, you know, be, there's like, um, I think 41, 41 programs like that, where you go in as like a, co a college freshman and then you kind of go through and, but go the rest to PA. Are, and then go straight to PA. Mm -hmm. um, and those tend to be like six years, you know, yeah. or five years. And then there are just the master's level programs. And then there are now universities offering um, a doctoral degree. Um, for once you've practiced, I think I saw one or two that are starting like their program that way. But with occupational therapists doing this and physical therapists doing this and nurse practitioners doing it and all the other allied yeah. health professions, I do see that trend, you know, yeah. starting to happen. 
I don't know that it'll be something that's required yeah. because I feel like it, like, like you said, right now, if I were to get a doctorate right now, it would be more for my teaching and think mentoring and things like that, but mm-hmm. not for my clinical practice. Totally. So, totally. But yeah, I do see that trend. Absolutely. Yeah. And is, um, how long was your program? As it- Mine was two years. It was pretty okay. quick. We had a quarter yeah. system, so it was 10 okay. weeks instead of 13, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And did you do rotations and things as well? Oh, yeah. 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 So I did. Um, so our program had, so I think for nationally, the bare minimum you have to do for clinical hours is 500 hours. And my right. program had 750. And then I did close to 800 because yeah. I guess I'm extra and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, I just, I had the time. I actually ended up quitting my nursing job the second half of my program because I tried to okay. work and go to school and it was, yeah, it was too much because I was also driving to LA from San Diego, which was like yeah. two and a half hours each way. So it was, it was a lot. And, w- and was your, so your BSN was enough. You didn't have to take any other classes. You didn't have to do anything like that, right? So I think that depends on the program, actually. Uh, but I think for me, I needed to take statistics, yeah. which I chose to do in my undergrad because I, I entertained the thought of going to grad school. So I think that was the main thing. And then I think some schools need orgo chem and like yeah. some other stuff. But I did, I, I had chemistry. Like I had like the BSN requirements. Yeah. So I have like organic chemistry, a certain number amount. Like it was included in my chemistry, but it wasn't okay. separate kind of thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean the variability from PA programs to PA programs is, is yeah. pretty significant. So I just wondered if it's kind of the same, yeah. you know, for you guys too. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Um, and so as a nurse practitioner, you are, so you're five years out of nurse practitioner, you know, becoming a nurse practitioner. So what was the hardest part for you? Was it transitioning into that role from a nurse? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Just the shock, the the shock. So, so my, my company is real world NP because like real world is that's like what the main frustration I think that new nurse practitioners have. And I don't know about PAs as well, but um, that's, it's just like, it's just huge culture shock of like, this is what the real world is actually like compared to what you learn in school. Yeah. So even, even doing clinicals, it's still shocking, you know, it's, still- Oh, it's so different. The <laughs> level of responsibility, yeah. um, the patients, I mean, it's, it's really hard. I talked to a new, uh, essentially a new grad PA, one of my other episodes, and he said the same thing. Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's like getting used to that. Like, okay, this is, the reality of this, like, this is my job. This is, you know, yeah. somebody's like, health. <laughs> yes. It's someone's health, someone's life. And like, just believe like this new way of thinking of yourself as being this person who can do this, you know? And cause like, I think it's so funny. i I work one-on-one with um, nurse practitioners um, mentoring and I remember this myself of like referring to their colleagues as their preceptors. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. it's just like, it's hard to embed that in your brain that like, no, it's you, like you are a nurse practitioner now. Like you can do this, you know? Yeah. Really yeah. Hard. And, and how do you feel about like, so were you kind of defaulting to nurse skills that you had, like RN skills you had, or you were just kind of like, okay, you know, this is just a next level of, I have to, you know, think next level almost, you know, I, I guess I'm not explaining that correctly, but I, mean, I, I think that like the default is to go back to like what, you know, at least my experience was that like, I kind of like would take it to a certain point and I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, and, and I'd kind of be like thinking still that there's somebody else at the end of the line yes. and then constantly having this re-realization of like, oh no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> And be like, oh gosh, oh gosh, what do I do now? And like people standing in my office, like the medical assistant at the front desk and like asking me to like make decisions about things. And I'm like, <sighs> you're like, wow, this is, this it is really it. Yes. Um, so, yeah, just like a who, thousand million questions every single day. So what resources did you use? Did you rely on some of your, obviously some of your colleagues? That's kind yeah. of what I did. Um, and my nurses were super helpful in kind of training me, particularly in oncology, when I moved into an oncology position, my first job as a hospitalist, um, there was a lot of PAs there and a, and a lot of physicians. So I relied on them, you know, the PAs and the physicians, but when I transitioned into kind of an outpatient practice, it was outpatient inpatient, but it was a specialty. I was like, I do not know what I (laughs) doing. Like I have never even heard of half these things. I, you know, so I really relied heavily on nurses, the nurses to help me, pharmacists to help me, um, like lab to, I mean, everybody, I was like, what, what, why are you doing that? Why, why are you doing that? 
I'm like, I what's had the that? pharmacist on speed dial. Oh, yeah. she, she'd pick up the phone and be like, hey, Liz. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Yelena, I have more questions for you. She was so good. My nurse was so good. My, yeah. my first job, my, my current job, my nurses are awesome too. But my, my first year, absolutely. She would be like, be like, Melissa, what do I do for this? And she'd be like, okay, now hold your hand. Yes. Do this. And then, yeah, my colleagues. And then up to date, I just like, oh, I, up to date tracker, is amazing. Yeah. New tracker was at like 500. I should have timed how quickly it got there, but it was like every article is like 0.5 and it would, it was insane how much reading I did every day, yeah. right? Every single location, every night, every weekend. Awesome. I'm still on up to date. Yes. Every always day. like yeah. always. Um, it's so great for clinical practice for mm-hmm. all of you that are new or even in PA school, I tell people, I'm like, this is it's just very well written. It is. Um, and there's some diagrams for visual people yes. and, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. the algorithms and um, especially, you know, in oncology, some of the algorithms are, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> and it's like really laid out yes. like for every specific thing. So it, it's really nice. And I use that as resource all the time. Um, and so, yeah, so that kind of, I think people have to understand that, it's very humbling. Very, very humbling. The first year. And it doesn't, and I think like, at least I don't know about PAs, but I feel like NPs get really frustrated with that real world transition that yeah. like, they kind of feel like the school didn't prepare them enough. Mm-hmm. And like, I, one of the things like, I, I think that's very normal to feel that way, but I think to normalize that experience, I think that a lot of PAs and NPs feel the same yeah. in that not, no school program can teach you everything. And that they're always, always, always is going to be on the job learning. Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends, like, I mean, not to, I think that can be a little controversial topic, but I think yeah. to, to normalize that there's always going to be off the job learning regardless of your degree. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, you know, people are asking about, there's a lot of residencies for PAs now, like one Mm, year residency fellowships and things like that. Do you have to do that? No, Mm -hmm. I got on the job training. You don't have to do that. If you want to do that. Yeah. It's awesome. Like you're going to get like highly specialized training in the area you want to be. Um, but you know, for me at the time there weren't very many available, but I also didn't know what specialty I wanted. Right. To do. No, it's true. I know. So. I looked into them as well, and there were there weren't that many. They were very competitive, and I didn't want to be long distance for my husband. So yeah, I was like I, it's. I'll just. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it would be great. It would be very nice. You know. Yeah. Like have a reduced schedule and weekly. You know, uh, informative sessions and stuff right. Like that, but... Yeah. And you are in primary care. Yes. Okay. Awesome. For and life. so. <laughs> for life, <laughs> primary care for life, community health for life. I think that's, I mean, I thought about specialty. I love women's health. I love GI, but I think it's, I think I'm a lifer. I yeah. That's care. awesome. <laughs> I actually loved my primary care rotation. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I would be fine to do primary care. You know what I mean? It's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and so are you, so tell me, so I know that there are like, you have to pick sort of like a focus, right? Like you're at an FNP or yeah. like, a, yeah. so tell There's me a little bit more about that. Cause I always get yeah. confused. I work with nurse practitioners and some of them are like adult critical care and then some yes. of them are FNP. So how do you sort of choose that? Totally. I mean, I think it's interesting because I think that there's a lot of, um, different uh routes to be a nurse and a nurse practitioner it's kind of confusing all the different like letters and and numbers it seems behind everyone's name but typically like fnp is like only outpatient training um with any age group Uh, adult gerontology is typically outpatient and then there's acute care programs and then there's also some specialty programs like women's health or oncology i've seen and there's also like uh maybe acute care as well like an extra certification but it's kind of it's interesting because like depending on where you practice family nurse practitioners can be in the hospital so right. It's really, they're trying to discourage that, but I think it really depends on your state and your hospital. Like in California, there's tons of family nurse practitioners in the inpatient settings, which I would feel terrified to do. But yeah, yeah. Well, um, I have a friend that is FNP, and she's in the hospital also. Yeah. 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 So because I mean, there's just there's so much on the job learning in general. Like you you get your foundations of like how to be a clinician and how to make decisions and all that stuff, and you have a foundation of knowledge and yeah. Yeah, and so you're basically picking that sort of focus it's not a specialty it's just a focus yeah right? so like they yeah. just don't cover like I do I didn't do any inpatient uh, rotations it was all like primary care or women's health or um pediatrics for okay. family nurse practitioner and so adult yeah. gerontology is like just internal medicine or um family practice just without the kids because they see kids like 13 and up so okay. they can still see anyone, so okay cool yeah I mean that's I think a little bit of a um 
confusing topic, I think, for some people. Like, well, nurse practitioner, you know, when we're comparing sort of nurse practitioner to PA, let me just clear the air here and say that we all like each other. Yes. <laughs> I mean, not everybody does, but we do. Not everybody does. Not <laughs> it all. It breaks my heart because I love PAs. Yes. You know? and there, and like, listen, there are going to be groups of people because we're all not the same, you know, which is glorious, but also can be challenging. There are groups of people that are not going to agree on, mm -hmm. you know, practices and things like that. So are there PAs that, you know, don't, not don't like nurse practitioners, but are, you know, not open to nurse practitioners. Are there yeah. NPs that are not open to PA? Yes. I mean, I think those, they just don't get each other. I think yeah, that's the problem. Those people are few and far between, I feel like, yeah. um, but they are there. And the same goes for MD. There yeah. are MD groups that don't like PA. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Um, it just depends on the person. And as a whole, in my practice over the last 15 years, I have always worked with NPs. Yeah. I have never had, you know, like yeah. any issues. Yeah. So, I love my PA colleagues in my last job. I don't have any PAs at my current job, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for the most part, we're all working towards the same goal Absolutely. and that is to provide the best care we can for our patients. Absolutely. Um, work together as a team. And, you know, I, I think that's really important to to tell people, but there used to be a real kind of um, culture where people thought PAs and NPs just didn't even like each other. And I'm like, that's just, <laughs> come on, y'all. That's just come like on, drama or something. Yes. Let's just all get along. So, um, so yeah, I feel like the, the main thing with PAs is that like you guys get to do like surgical assist. Yeah. And, like, surgery type of like the none of that is in family in family nurse yeah. or adult care even it's nothing in the hospital yeah yeah and so I think you know there are differences and I think the best way I, to know is just to to check out the different you know careers and go shadow somebody go Absolutely. spend time with an NP 100%. um and go spend time with a PA I get asked a lot can nurses become PAs yes oh yeah can but Definitely. You know, I have a lot of people asking me that actually. I've referred them to you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> to um, chat about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can. It's just that, you know, I think the more traditional route is to go NP, you know, yeah. so, you, but you certainly can. Um, I just did a blog post recently about that. So, um, so it's just, you know, I just want people to understand that their careers are both great, you mm -hmm. know, and you, you both wind up, you know, taking care of patients and doing practicing medicine, which is yeah. what, you got into it for anyway, right? right? right. So, it's the best. It's so fun. Don't you love it? I just, I, do. I just, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I like it. Um, <clears throat> otherwise I would have quit my job already. Um, but no, I mean, I love it. I love being a PA. I have no regrets. I say that all the time. Um, and so I think it's really important to know the differences, you know, between some of these things. So as a family, so being in primary care, tell us a little bit about what your day looks like, kind of what you're typically seeing. Yeah. So, um, there's a lot of diabetes. There's a lot okay. of hypertension. Uh, there's a lot of, um, I think those are the main chronic conditions that kind of come in and then, you know, smattering of in between of like physicals. So my personal job has, um, up to 10 physicals a day, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, and that's not, it depends on your practice, but I definitely see like an interspersing of physicals with chronic care management of diabetes, hypertension, uh, heart failure, all of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, sick visits of, um, fungal toenails or, yeah. um, you know, vaginitis or UTIs or yeah. coughs or something like that. But yeah, it's, right. it's definitely like a general smattering. I mean, my personal practice right now, I have a lot more kids than my last job. I've had two oh, wow. practitioner jobs. And yeah, so it's not half, but it's almost half um, of well child checks, newborn visits, um, you know, rashes. Like yeah. Things that get it, so yeah. And do you do small procedures in, in the office I too? Do. Yes. I do. I love procedures. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. I would do all of them if I could. Um, so I do uh, IUD insertions for removals, next one on insertion removals, endometrial biopsies, punch biopsies. Um, I'm not doing joint injections because I feel like I need a little bit more like mentoring guidance for that. Yeah. And typically they go to orthopedics for that, but um, anything and everything I can do is amazing. That's so actually, awesome. Me, I don't do colposcopies because it's a ton of training and not a ton of demand. Yeah. Um, but it's me and one other person that do all the women's health stuff, which is super fun. I, if I could have my way, I'd have at least 
two to four of those a day when I typically do, which is really Wow. Cool. That's that. great. Yeah. That's the thing that people don't, I don't think realize about primary care is like, you can do so much in the office. Yes. I remembered my primary care rotation and it was like, it's like I and D's and like, yes. you know, all those that too, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, like a little bit of surgery. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. Um, lots of procedures. I shouldn't be around anything sharp. Um, but I, you know, I, it is fun and it's very versatile. Um, and you just learn so many different skills, you know, mm -hmm. being in primary care. And I think like also community health, like to make a plug, yeah. um, is that like you get to do so much there because the limited resources and access that like you kind of just expand your scope even more. I mean, never yeah. without, never unsafely, but like if they can't, if they don't have insurance and they have a laceration, you're going to manage it, you know, they're right. going to ER, so. Right. That's so true. That is so true. And, um, what was I going to say? I was going to ask you, you said something about, um, oh, when you refer to specialty. So this is something I get asked a lot too. Like, what do you do to sort of set them up to be referred for a specialty? Yeah. So my, uh, the place I work right now is there's a lot of, um, language barriers and, and lower health literacy. And so our typical process is that we have a group of specialists that we typically refer to yeah. or hospitals based on the insurance. Well, the referrals department will make the appointment for them and then either call them or send a letter in the mail. And I kind of just talk through what that looks like for the patients and to like, have, you know, call back if they don't hear from us or something like that. And then typically for me, my personal practice is that I am a, uh, anyone who follows me has probably heard this before, but yeah. I love cold calling. I love developing relationships with specialists and having my own like team. And I've been yeah. out a newer job, so I don't have as big of a network, but I try my very best to kind of connect with them and kind of make sure that I'm doing the maximum I can in primary care so that we're using the best use of their time, their time right. in the Right. So like when people, when I worked at a more of a community practice where we saw heme and onc, so like even anemia and stuff, yeah, they would come to us already with a lot of the workup complete, yeah. you know, yeah. the primary care doctors would have ordered, you know, the B12, the folate, the yeah. iron, the, you know, they would have already kind of done that. So like yeah. the only stuff we were doing were kind of you know, maybe some additional specialty tests that yeah. needed send out, you know, yeah. and it's really important for primary care. They play a huge role in that process, kind of yeah. getting the, and streamlining in. Yeah. Just so like you can like specialty. have a visit with that data and then you don't have to like have a first visit, order the test, have a second visit, go through them, order more tests, you know? Yes. Yeah. No, it, I mean, it's crazy. Like when somebody comes to us with a diagnosis, it's a lot easier than having to start from scratch. Yes. <laughs> Here, you need these 700 tests. Come back next week. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it just delays everything for the patient and yeah. it's crazy. But, um, so that, that is a huge part about primary care too. So I think, and community health and, and all of that. So, um, so tell us, you know, so you guys, Liz has a YouTube channel with tons of <laughs> <laughs> informational videos for you know, new providers. So NPs, um, I've watched some of them, you know, PAs yeah, can dang. utilize that too. Um, just very good, clear information on how to work up certain things, how to, you know, how to set people up for a visit with a specialist. So tell me what you feel has been the most rewarding part of real world NP and, and where you see that going. It's so fun. I mean, I, uh, I mean, it's super fun for me because I am just a huge nerd and I love <laughs> reading and I love learning and I love teaching. And so I'm just like really honored that like in my real life, I can be like over helping sometimes. Yes. <laughs> and so this venue is really nice that I'm over helping and you can choose whether or not to be yes. by it, you know? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but the rewarding part is I just love talking with everybody. I mean, the people who send me messages and leave comments and like, I mean, I could tear up, I'm, I'm a crier, but it's very, um, it's just very touching when people reach out that feel, they feel like they don't have the support that they need in their job. And like the reason they're making it through is because of the support that I've given them like remotely. Yeah. And that's just like, oh, you know, because I definitely like, it was painful. Like the first year of practice was so painful. Even if, even though I had great colleagues who yeah. I, I could ask questions, I mean, I lost 10 pounds because yeah. I couldn't eat because I was so stressed, you know? Yeah. And, I had an endoscopy and I thought I had a huge ulcer and they're like, yeah, you have functional dyspepsia from all of your stress. And like, oh God. So like if I can make a little tiny dent for somebody so that they don't have to go through that, like, yeah, I mean, it's still stressful, but it is. And I mean, we all, you know, have that 
kind of anxiety. I think at some point you're like, Oh, <laughs> but just to be able to have something else, you know, to look at and be like, Oh, look, like she's telling me how to interpret these labs. Super helpful. Like, yes. <laughs> really and, like helpful. Just so much time because I just remember, and I don't, I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I would be so drained. I'd be so yeah. exhausted. And I'd have this laundry list of all the things that I should have known already. Yeah. And I just feel bad because I'm like, I don't have any gas left. I have nothing left to continue to look at this. So I just look at whatever was in front of me that yeah. day. And so if I can save somebody time, because they can just kind of zone out and just like sort of half listen to me. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> they still get something, you know, they'll get something out of it, which is great. <laughs> yeah. So um, Liz is also a mom. And yeah. so tell us how, you know, balancing everything has been for you. So when I was pregnant, so I have my daughter's two and a half, um, I was pregnant uh, with her and I told the nurse that I worked, I was very close with my last job. And I, I was like, oh, I'm coming back full time. I'm coming back. And she's like, yeah, right. That's what they all say. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing it. I love this job. And I do. And I did. I, I, yeah. And I do. But um, it was hard. It was very, very hard um, just trying to balance it all. So I had cut down to 30 hours from 40 um, when I had her. And then yeah. um, at this new job, I got, I burned myself out. I, I have always kind of struggled with balancing self-care, um, which I'm getting a lot better at. But I went to 20 hours at my new job. Um, and it's just been really helpful. I think being part-time also for me, having the venue of Real World MP, like I've always wanted to be a teacher and yeah. I didn't want to wait to go to grad school, quite honestly. So that's why I decided to start doing it now. And I think that that balancing with the clinic stuff, with the mom stuff has been really helpful because it's like clinic is amazing, but it's also a lot, you know? Yes. So for yeah. me personally, cutting back on my hours was, was really helpful. Um, and the, you know, the, the colleagues that I have that work full time still, like they, it's hard when you have kids, like yeah, it's hard to have two full-time working parents. And so it's, yes. it's a lot, but I think cutting back on my hours for me was really helpful and finding a daycare that I super, super love. That's like a second family is just been yeah. world changing for me. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, I got so burned out, um, doing clinical practice. I mean, yeah. I love taking care of patients and I, I liked my, you know, I love being oncology. I love my job, but when you're doing that, you know, 40 plus hours a week. Yeah. For, I mean, because it's not 40. Yeah. It's not 40. Because right. you see um, patients and then you chart and all that stuff. And yeah. You get paid administrative time. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. Typically in primary care, it's like 32 clinical hours and eight administrative hours. But right. that sometimes it's not enough. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, it's draining, you know, to do that again and again. And even though you really, you enjoy it, you kind of start losing that like fire you had for it. And yeah. you're just kind of like, this is exhausting. And you know, I was the same. I, you know, when, when I was pregnant with Mia, I planned on going back to work full time as well. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we moved to South Carolina and I didn't have a job. So I had her. So I was like, and then I was able to start part time, which yeah. I was like, oh, I'm totally going to full time. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice. It's really nice. I'm still part-time. I'm very <laughs> lucky that I can afford to do that. And it's, if you can afford, I mean, I've always had the mindset that like 30 hours, I mean, I'm with the, I think that's the French do that. <laughs> yes. Like, Their full-time is 30 hours. I think I've always been that. And now I do 20, yeah. but I also do the real world MP. So I'm working a little bit closer to full-time now, but. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the other thing too, that, you know, that I've found is that while I love clinical practice, I also needed something else, yeah. you know, that yeah. was not that. Yeah. So I think by doing that and starting Posh PA and all of that, and it, it's just something that's outside of what you're doing with patients that yeah. gives you some life and, yeah. you know, gives you some fire. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I always encourage people like, even though you're taking, even though you're taking care of patients full time, like you're working full time, like you have to find something that you love. Yes. You have to fill up your cup. And I think that's like the thing that I neglected for like, I've been, a, I've been a nurse for 11 years now and like, yeah. it's taken me, like, I've thought about it. I thought about it five years in and it's like, just been such a slow process of like, no, this is actually incredibly important. And yeah. like, you can't just keep giving and giving and giving and giving and like wearing yourself down because I'm a very, like, I feel like I have a deep well of giving, but yeah. it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You just have to do something and it doesn't have to be teaching or it doesn't have to be whatever, you know, just yeah. whatever it is that's fun for you. you know? Right. And I had this conversation with Dave because, you know, while I've been practicing for so long, he's only been working for six years, you know, all of that training. And he, you know, as a new attending, super stressful, yeah. um, those first couple of years. And 
he was like last year or the year before, you know, it's kind of his fourth year in, he was getting all like, you know, kind of in his head and just kind of not, depressed but like not depressed more like kind of angry I'm like what's wrong with you like you this is what you worked for you know this whole time and I just encouraged him to like he's like well I'm never here and I don't want to be I don't want to like go do something else I'm like listen I would rather you go do something you love Mm -hmm. for an hour you know than be here and be grumpy yeah Yeah. you have to have something else yeah like that you really enjoy and he loves to surf. So, okay, go surfing awesome. or go play golf or yes. he loves to take the dogs for a walk. Like it's easy stuff. Yeah. You know? that's awesome. That's it's awesome. easy stuff, but you have to, you're so, it's so true. Like you have to find something that is going to balance out the patient care part because yeah. it is hard to kind of continually give um, yourself. And I, I'm very much like you, like, I just want to, do what I can for everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. And so and it, oncology too. Oncology yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, it can be hard. So I think, you know, I'm still at part-time. I'm definitely more full-time now, you know, having Posh PA, which is great, which I love, but it, it I'm excited about it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, totally. and, and then I also get more excited to go to work because yes. I'm like, okay, today's my patient day. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I yeah. got a full click. Tuesdays are like my busy day. You know, we got the yeah. clinic and everything. So it, it has really done a lot for me in both aspects. Absolutely. So yeah. And balancing, you know, having, having a little one is, is tough. So yes. at least, at least she's sleeping now. I mean, oh, that's, that's, way, nice. but yes. <laughs> that's amazing. We're yeah. back in the crib with this whole stressful transition with the quarantine yeah. and all that stuff, but we'll get back yeah. to the big girl bed soon. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, and I, I never, I, I, I stay at home moms are my heroes because I can't like, be, I, I'm not like cut for, I don't have the patience. Mm-hmm. Um, I love being with her, yep. but I think being, and I'm, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to be with her. Um, you know, those two days when I'm not, working, yeah. um, when I'm not in the clinic, um, and because she's an only child, I feel like it's nice for me to have that with her, but, totally. um, and that's why I love being a PA because I can have, you know, these different things. Not that you can't, if you're a physician or anything yeah. else, I feel very strongly that in any career you make it the way yeah. you, you make want whatever. It. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I actually, I, I forgot to mention that it just reminded me that I actually really considered uh, med school for, for a long time. Um, and I think it, that's what it came down to. Is yeah. That, uh, the flexibility is that like, yeah. I feel like I have so much control as a nurse practitioner and it's yeah. maybe it doesn't pay as well. <laughs> right, 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 right. You no, know, I get to, I get to do what I want. And that's so important to me, flexibility and freedom. So yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, what is the one thing that you would sort of tell somebody that is like, I really want to be a nurse practitioner. What's kind of the best piece of advice you could give them? Um, I definitely think that it comes down to, I think a lot of people go into it with like a like logical type of perspective, which is, which is awesome. But I think it really comes down to heart. And I think it comes down to how it makes you feel like when you, so first of all, I feel like you need exposure, right. Of of shadowing or or knowing somebody who's a nurse practitioner and like getting that experience. But like, once you have that experience, like, what does your heart tell you? Because I have a lot of people who are, who have been a nurse for 20 years and they're like, is it worth it? Cause I'm going to retire soon. Or like, I'm not happy as a nurse. Like I should just go back and get my MP. And it's like, well, do you really understand what that means? Right. And like, does that align for you? Does that feel good? Because this takes a lot. It's not just yeah. a degree. It's not just money. It's not just time. This is like, it's like, it's, it's like one of those careers that you're just, I get chills just talking about it. It's like, it's one of those careers that it's like, you, it, it takes a lot to do it. So it's responsibility. Yeah. Responsibility. And you need to be passionate because it's, it's, it's hard work. It's really yeah. hard work. And not that being a nurse is not hard. It's just hard in a very different way. It's just different. Yeah. 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 It's just really different. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Liz, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys, you so much for having me. This is awesome. Um, if you don't follow her, it's at real world MP, right? Yes. On, on Instagram and Facebook. On Instagram as well. and Facebook and, and check, YouTube. And YouTube. <laughs> so check out her YouTube yes. um, as well. And, and I also have an ultimate resource guide for new NPs. Oh, I that's right. Yes. That plug link. it, plug it. Yes. So it's uh, realworldnp.com slash guide. And so if you sign up there, you can get that ultimate resource guide. And I actually have a ton of freebies as well that go with the YouTube videos. Perfect. Hep C and Hep B and like all this other stuff too. So definitely. 
That's so awesome. Thank you so much for being here and being on my podcast. And yes, um, you I guys, wait. Uh, if you have any questions for Liz or uh, you want to drop a comment here and let us know if you want us to talk about something else, that would be great. Make sure you subscribe and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.